Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery who I personally rate very highly and indeed most other people in Scotland who are into their craft beer will always tell you this is a very very good brewery. So for this one we're going to go down to the Scottish Borders region and we're going to revisit Tempest Brewing Company. This one's called The Long White Cloud and it's an extra pale ale apparently. But if you do go and read on the website it tells you that it's a New Zealand inspired pale ale and my experience of New Zealand craft beer is that the hops you get down there are really something else they've got some really awesome flavors so I'm very excited to try this one the last beer I reviewed from these guys which was the Brave New World the IPA that's one of the best IPAs I've ever reviewed from Scotland maybe even overall on the channel it's a really really beautiful beer so when this one has New Zealand hops in it I'm very interested to see what this guy's like and as I say a very very good brewery and if you want to get into Scottish beer you need to check these guys out but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual websites are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other Tempest reviews I've done for you before and there's all the usual social media things Facebook Twitter and Untapped so please do check those out and support me on there it would be much appreciated and if you want to see more Tempest reviews and more Scottish reviews do subscribe to the channel and there's many other interesting things coming up there as well a lot of Swedish and Danish reviews coming out at the moment since I'm living over there now but I hope you enjoy this review nonetheless so anyway to tell you about Tempest Brewing Company. So these guys were founded back in 2010 by Gavin and Anika Mikkeljohn. They were originally based in Kelso but they're now based in Gala Shields and both of those towns are in the Scottish Borders region. But Anika actually trained as a chef in New Zealand and the couple returned to Scotland in 2007 to run the Cobbles Bar in Kelso. Gavin on the other hand had previously worked for the Whistler Brewing Company in British Columbia and Canada so he had a real appreciation of craft beer and he'd also taken brewing courses while the couple lived in Sydney in Australia and he actually had home brewed when they lived in Wellington New Zealand as well. They had a small 50 litre kit brewery and this was where Gavin's kind of passion for craft beer really started to come out. But at the business these days Gavin joined by Alan Rice who acts as the business development manager for Tempest and he previously worked in Edinburgh at the Stewart Brewing Company and they're another very very good good Scottish brewing company you really need to check those guys out if you get the chance but the brewery were previously based in an old dairy building in Kelso and the the brewery that they had there was largely a kind of homemade and home engineered thing and the whole idea behind that was to produce the big flavoured beers but on a shoestring budget but their beers proved to be very very popular these guys have had a kind of meteoric rise if you like they were a very small operation and they got their beers quite quickly into odd bins and they really spread like wildfire but they're very very good beers but more recently they've moved to their new and bigger home in the Tweed Bank Industrial Estate in Gala Shields and they've got a huge 32 hectolitre system now. It's, it's obviously not as big as the macro breweries but it is a nice big system so there's a lot more things coming out of Tempest these days and of course that's very good because they produce some really damn awesome beer. But they use hops from the UK, Germany, New Zealand and also North America in their beers. They've also got a wide variety of yeast strains in their beers too but the most interesting thing about this company is that they use local malts. As you've heard me say in quite a few of my videos. In Scotland we don't have hops because it's it's too cold to grow hops quite honestly but they've got the Golden Promise malt that they use and this is produced locally in Kelso and then it's dried in Berwick at Simpsons Malt House so when you try one of the Tempest beers you are getting something. You're getting an international beer if you like but you're getting the malt base is truly Scottish so that's what I really like about Tempest Brewery. It's always nice to have a little bit of Scottishness in your beers or a little bit of native character to your beers that come out from all over the place. But anyway that's your little bit about Tempest Brewing Company. As I said the website's in the description below so you can read more about them if you like. Just to list the main core range from these guys there's the Brave New World IPA that's a beautiful beautiful beer. There's the Easy Living Pills, Elemental which is a porter, In the Dark We Live which is a black IPA, there's this guy here which is the Long White Cloud an extra paleo or a New Zealand paleo however you want to describe it Red Eye Flight which is a mocha porter the Pale Armadillo which is another paleo and there's also the Unforgiven Red Dry which is meant to be a nice kind of smoky red dry beer that one should be very very interesting so I need to try that at some point in the near future but anyway let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer itself so I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up but this one is a 5.6% paleo and it uses hops from the South Island in New Zealand and of course it has that golden promise malt in it too I actually reviewed the, the IPA the Brave New World just after they changed their labels they used to use half litre bottles but they've changed to the 330s now and they've changed their labels to this kind of new 
quite trendy modern thing. I do have to admit, I quite like it. And all the bottle caps are similar to this, just a different colour depending on what trim you have around the edge of the label here. But it says on the side, the, the culmination of a long adventure from South Island heritage to modern day classic. Stratospheric small batch, extra paleo of Aotearoa origins with a citrus silver lining. And it says, so the fresh beer to the core, Tempest Brewing Company established 2010. You can see the kind of bullhorns Tempest thing on the side there. But these guys, as I said, are a very, very good brewery and I'm very much looking forward to trying this one. So let's not muck around anymore. Let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here. So as you can see, a nice smoky opening there. My first encounter with Tempest Brewing Company was actually a collaboration beer that they did with Brewdog called Marmalade on Toast. I think they've rebranded it now and they do it as a seasonal called Marmalade on Rye, but that was a really, really beautiful beer and it was very quirky. It really did taste like Marmalade on Toast. That was one of the collab fest beers that Brewdog did back maybe in 2009, 2010, but that was my first encounter with Tempest and then I tried one of their own beers just a couple of months back and it was absolutely beautiful. So, and I've heard many good things about Tempest, so you really need to try these beers if you want to try Scottish brewery, brewery produce if you like. But this one, as you can see, has poured a very nice bright orange amber colour here. It's not transparent at all. If I put my fingers behind it, you can see it is quite opaque in colour. There's some big bubbles sticking to the side of the glass, but quite a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. And the head is fading away to be just a very thin foamy layer. But overall, looks a very, very nice beer. No sediment visible in it either, which is nice. But yeah, it looks very nice. So let's give it a smell and see how we get on here. Oof, now that is interesting. There's a lot of interesting fruits going in there. That's typical New Zealand hops. With New Zealand hops, you get really nice citrus. You get a really nice citrus with New Zealand hops. And you also get quite a lot of tropical fruit in there. There's a nice big orangey citrus coming out from this one. Maybe tangerines, actually doesn't smell like your kind of typical orange. It's a little bit darker and juicier than that. And that's what I remember tangerines being like, just a bit darker and a bit more juicy. But there's definitely tropical fruit in there. It's got to be a bit of grapefruit mixing in with the citrus. Maybe peaches as well. There's definitely peaches. Maybe some mangoes or passion fruit too. But there's quite a complex tropical character to this. But I think the citrus is just pushing out a little bit ahead of that tropical fruit aroma. But other than that, there's a good bit of floral aromaticity. It's not too sharp, it's quite subtle, but you can feel it. It's one of the, the sharper notes in this. The nose on this one isn't anywhere near as pungent as the, the Brave New World, don't get me wrong on that, but there's quite a bit of complexity to this. This is a more subtle and more complex nose than the IPA was. The IPA was really quite punchy in its, in its in its aroma, but there's a nice smooth grassy character, some floral aromaticity to this one. But you can also smell the nice malt in this. There's a, it's a kind of caramelly and biscuity malt underneath the hops, and it does actually smell quite unique. It reminds it when I try it when I smelt this one, it really did remind me of that kind of unusual character that came out of the IPA. But this is a very, very nice beer. You can smell the nice, complex, tropical New Zealand hop notes in this. I think they said they used American and British hops in this too. But it smells very, very nice. As I always say, give your beers a good smell before you actually get stuck into them. But we'll try this guy now. So this is the Long White Cloud from Tempest Brewing Company in Gala Shields in the border region in Scotland. Slange. Oh yeah, that's quite nice that. There's quite a, it's quite a subtle and quite complex beer, I would say. Yeah, that really is interesting. Because obviously the difference between a pale ale and an IPA is that you've got a lower uh, hop to malt ratio or malt to hops. I forget which way it goes, but there's less malt and less hops in these beer, if I remember correctly. It's basically a toned down version of the IPA and it's full of flavour, that's the thing. I've found, I've only recently got into trying paleos. I was always into the IPAs and the double IPAs and I've started to expand more recently and try a bit more paleo. And the, the, some of these guys are very, very good. This is no exception to that. Mm. The paleo's ideal if you want a nice, slightly more sessionable 
hoppy beer and this one is very very good the New Zealand character in the hops here is really shining through but you can pick up some of the English hops as well that's slightly more earthy and floral aromatic character that's shining through in this one the fruitiness from the American and the New Zealand hops is actually taking a bit of a back seat in this one I think yeah the fruit starts to come out a bit more as your palate adjusts so as I always say make sure you sugar the beer around your palate a bit before you start to dissect the flavour too much mm. but yeah the malt base as I said with the IPA the malt base and this one is very nice your middle of your palate is just blanketed with this nice light almost pale malt character that just goes right across the middle of the tongue and on top of that You've got this slightly cereally kind of sweet biscuity character coming out of the beer and there's a kind of there's a line of very sweet caramel goes down the middle of your tongue and around that that's on the very edges of the palate that's when you start to get the hoppiness out of the beer. Mm. Okay, so to the hoppy parts of the beer, on the back corners of the palate, I'm getting a little bit of earthiness, and that's probably from the English hops. English hops tend to have quite an earthy backbone to them and in, in the back corners of the palate there is a bit of an earthy dryness but as you move further forward it becomes more floral and aromatic and in the front corners of the tongue there's a real floral aromatic bitterness coming out of this beer yeah it smooths out a little bit as you go around the front of the tongue and becomes more grassy but there is a good bit of floral aromatic bitterness to this one and that's the trademark of Tempest Brewery they do like their big hop forward beers for the next one I really need to review one of their darker beers I think and just see what the other extreme of their brewing is the hoppy beers they're very good at so I need to try one of the darker ones and see how those come across but yeah this is nice the fruity characters start to come out in the beer a little bit later on so with this one, I would say it's quite. Ci I would say it's more citrusy than tropical. There is an element of the kind of dark, slightly sour grapefruit character to this beer, for, but for me, it's actually more about the citrus, to be honest. And you can feel that there's a little oily bubble just behind the very front curve of your tongue, and there's a kind of slightly dark orange citrus coming out of there, and the, the grapefruit is just mixing in with that. There's maybe a little bit of peach in there. I'm getting just a little bit of that kind of. Um, how do you, how would you describe it? That sort of softer and um, kind of fluffy peach flavour. I don't know. Fluffy is maybe not a very good way to describe it, but that peachy character is coming out there. It's just it's coming out more in the aftertaste, just as the the bit behind the front of your tongue becomes a bit more juicy. There's maybe even a little bit of mango or something in there, but there is a bit more complexity to the tropical fruit in this beer than simply grapefruit. So just pay attention to that behind the front of your tongue. And second thought as well, there maybe is a bit of passion fruit mixing with the grapefruit. It does come across as the grape. There's definitely grapefruit mixing with the citrus flavors in here, but I think there is passion fruit in there too. One of the beers I tried very recently, the Smooth from Popo's Bakery over in Sweden, had a nice had a nice uh, passion fruit flavor, and I'm just picking up a little bit of that in there. But I think there's peaches and a little bit of apricot in there too. But as I say, flavor is always subjective. You guys might detect slightly different fruits from me. I've been trying to train my palate to pick up these different fruit flavors. But the main point is, this is a very nice beer. As is always the case with the paleos, it's a little bit less, uh, there's a little bit less focus on the malt than the IPA. The malt is usually a bit bigger in the IPA, but this has got some really nice hoppy character and it's quite crisp and quite refreshing. Mm. but yeah in terms of the, the mouthfeel this one mid bodied carbonation is quite crisp actually it's not too active but it's got just enough activity to bring out the floral aromatic and kind of grassy characters in this one but it's a little bit oily there's some nice fruity character to it but that's quite mild it comes out more in the aftertaste in the aftertaste you've got quite a lot of floral aromaticity just lingering in the middle of the palate there which is on the sides of the palate sorry there which is quite nice there's a bit of malt sweetness but not too much but it's got a good hoppy bitterness there that's the main component of the beer that's coming out but the main point is this is another very very good beer from Tempest Brewery mm. yeah 
very very good so I'd recommend this beer to people who like probably people who like English pale ales but want them a bit hoppier would enjoy this beer um, it's pr probably more suited to people who like the floral arom fl the kind of floral aromatic IPAs it's not too fruity it is supposed to be a paleo rather than an IPA though so you can understand that but it's another very very good beer from Tempest Brewery if you like your floral aromaticity then you will enjoy this beer I would say if you want something that's a little bit fruity and has some of the nice fruity flavours I'd tell you to get the, the Brave New World instead of this one this one's a good beer don't get me wrong on that but if you like the kind of bigger uh, slightly more alcoholic and more fruity beers if you like then the, the the brave new world is probably the one you want to go for but this is another very very good beer from tempest there's no doubt about that so yeah um i hope you've enjoyed this beer review as always let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below if you do happen to have tried it go and check out tempest brewery those of you watching outside of scotland and all over the world if you do come to scotland check out a few of the tempest beers they're getting more white they're getting more and more widely available these guys are growing very fast and quite rightly because their beer is pretty damn good i have to say so you'll start to see tempest beers all over the place and if you are trying this beer abroad do let me know where you're actually trying this beer from it'd be really interesting to hear from you guys on that note but thank you for watching the beer reviews until the next one please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff go and check out my social media things but most importantly support your local craft breweries and do go and check out tempest brewing company very very good scottish craft brewery who are on the rise in my opinion and they produce some pretty damn good beer so hopefully i can return to them in the near future and review some more beers but until the next one slanji just now have a happy new year and all of this i'm filming this these reviews during december so enjoy your festive period and i will catch you soon cheers <laughs>